Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video is going to be about plain air festival prep part one. I think, or something along those titles. I signed up to be a plain air artist at a plain air festival that is being held for the first time in my local area. It is being held at the Roger Tory Peterson Institute. Um, if you're not familiar with that name, he did a lot of field guides. So they are hosting this festival for the first time ever and they were limiting limiting it to 60 artists and I signed up to be one of them. I have never done anything like this before and I'm really nervous. So this video is going to be um, kind of like the prep and what I'm going to do to prepare for the festival. I think I'm going to do some practicing of certain um, landscape elements and stuff like that that I'm going to include. I also got a couple supplies, so I will show you that here in a second. And then there's going to be a part two video, which when it's posted, I will link it above if you want to check it out, but that is not happening until uh, next week. So it's happening um, over the course of like three to four days. So the first day you check in, they're gonna have a kickoff event. And the next day you're gonna have um, painting all day. And then it's a Friday that you finish, you wrap up your painting, you turn in your work. And then Saturday they um, exhibit your work and it can be for sale. And then they're also gonna do like an award ceremony and stuff to close out the festival. So like I said, I'm really nervous, never done anything like this. I will definitely try to grab as much footage as that for part two. Um, but for this video, we're going to go over some things that I bought in preparation for plain air painting. Now, if you don't know what plain air painting is, that simply just means like painting outside. So you can't have anything, um, pre-done on your paper because you're just sitting outside and what you see is what you're going to paint. Okay, so let's get into what I purchased for doing the Plain Air Festival. I only got a few things, but if you do really like art supply hauls, I just posted a video last week doing a massive art supply haul of a whole bunch of supplies I was gathering over a long time period. So if you want to check it out, I will link that above um, if you're interested in art supply hauls. But this one's just like a mini haul. So the reason this package is so huge is because of this. This is an Arteza clip, sketch, and draw board. It's sturdy and lightweight, and it has um, heavy-duty rubber bands here at the bottom. There's three of them, and then a clip at the top, and then a handle. So I thought this would be great for holding my paper when I'm painting. Being that I'm going to be doing watercolor, I don't like an easel. I don't have an easel up on a like a tripod, a lot of plein air, which is probably what you think of as the tripod and painting. That's, I feel like a lot of oil painters do that or acrylic, but, and some watercolors do do use that, but I don't, I just don't like it. That's not how I work. So I'm going to be working flat with this on my lap. I may tilt the board occasionally, depending if I need um, the water to run, but this is a perfect size. I don't think I'm going to be doing anything really huge because I mean, we have to complete this painting over like a day and a half. And this is a 13 by 17 size board. So I don't think I'm gonna paint bigger than that. So I think this is perfect to be able to carry around with my painting on it. The next thing I bought are these. These are double dipper metal palette cups. Now, the awesome thing about these is that it can clip. I don't know if you can see that underneath. So I'm thinking that I will clip it like on the edge of this board. So just like this and these tops screw off. I don't know if it can hold like water tightly. Like if I fill it up and tip it, will it leak out? Um, 
and it doesn't hold a lot of water but hopefully I don't need too much I'm also gonna probably bring a bottle of water with me in case I need extra but with watercolor you want a dirty cup and a clean cup so we'll see and the last thing I purchased well it's technically not the last thing I actually ordered two more things that I'm probably not gonna get in time to show in this video So I also ordered these two things. This is a Molotov masking fluid pump marker. And then this is a masking fluid pen. Now I already have one here, but it did get clogged and it does say non-clogging, but that is not true. These are, anything with masking fluid is kind of hard to deal with in terms of letting it dry and clogging. So. I'm gonna keep on working to be able to use this and get this unclogged, but I have to paint soon. So I quickly ordered this and it doesn't hurt to have a couple on hand anyways. And I can always swap out the tips on each one if need be. And then this is a Molotov masking fluid marker, which I've never used before. So I'm not familiar with how it works and if there's gonna be any clogging issues with this one but these are both small enough to take with me. And I was thinking I wanted to do um, reflections in the water, so I may need it and I may not, but they're small enough to take with me, so that's what I will be carrying. So the next thing I purchased was this, and this is a pouch with paintbrushes from Paint Crush on YouTube, also known as Christy Rice. So I was actually eyeing this um, paintbrush set for a while and it comes in this cute little canvas um, pouch, zippered pouch, and the paintbrushes are inside. So in this paintbrush set you get six paintbrushes. They're all different colors, fun colors, and she has a little saying on each one of the brushes, which I think is really nice touch. But you have a three quarter inch flat wash brush. You have a half inch dagger brush, a quarter inch dagger brush, a number one size cat's tongue. You have a number two round and a number one liner. So I don't own any dagger brushes, cat's tongue, or liner brushes. So that's why I was really interested in this brush set. Also because it comes with a pouch so I can bring other brushes with me when I go to the Plain Air Festival. I can tuck them all in here and then just bring this one pouch filled with some brushes so that way if I need a different kind of brush I can have a variety with me. voiceover Jessica here. I am just playing with these new brushes in my handmade watercolor sketchbook. I recently released this video a couple weeks ago, so if you're interested in making your own watercolor sketchbook which lays completely flat, I will leave a link for the tutorial in the corner above. But I really enjoyed these brushes. I found that they got a variety of strokes and that they'd be really good for florals. That's what Chrissy Rice is pretty much known for and she has a lot of tutorials on her channel. I'm just really excited to have these affordable brushes because I think I will definitely get a lot of use out of them. Let me give you a close-up. Next, I wanted to show you um, some practice I've been doing in my sketchbook in preparation of doing the plain air and some landscapes. And this is the first thing I did, and it is not the best. Um, I kind of just did this really quick to just get an idea and play with a few different techniques. I wanted to try to do three different ways of watercolor reflection and it ended up 
not being very good. Um, I think I rushed it and then my water got dirty and I was only using one jar of water. We should be using two, but I was being kind of lazy. And then when it started to look bad, I just got frustrated. And I mean, I finished it, but it's just not what I wanted. So then I started to watch some YouTube tutorials, specifically on trees to start with. I figured I'd take this in baby steps. So that's when I started doing some tree practice, which I really liked. Um, I think they turned out really well and I tried using some different colors. I was practicing my value scales with colors that I knew I was going to be using a lot of. And value scales are super helpful, especially in a landscape because the stuff in the distance is gonna be lighter and then the stuff in the foreground or closest to you is gonna be darker. And then I just kind of picked out a few colors that I thought that I'd be using a lot of to do swatches. And then I tried doing a different, a couple different ways of doing the trees. So these ones I used already pre-mixed greens. And this one, what I did was lay a base of this permanent yellow. And then I dabbed in some cerulean blue over top. But I don't think it's the look I'm gonna go for for the festival, but it's just a neat, way that when the paint mixes, it makes the um, this bright green. And then I was playing with that mixed color over here and how to um, desaturate it by mixing the opposite colors to get uh, maybe like shadow colors or something. And then I just filled in the page more with some more trees. And then I noticed I was using some Van Dyke Brown but didn't list it over here. So I just popped it over here. Then I did some practice with the trees. These are just made up. Um, I wasn't using a reference photo or anything like that. I was just going out of my head, I guess, or imagination. And this top one, I thought the back trees in the, the background were a little too dark, but I really liked how I did the field with the dry brushing. And then I spattered some yellow on it, like dandelions. And I thought that turned out kind of nice. So then I tried it again, but I did the back trees a little lighter. So then I did a middle tree and then a foreground tree and then some detail up front. So I thought the, the depth was a little better. And then I tried a tutorial, which I thought turned out pretty good for my first try. I did not do any sketching. It was literally just all paint and uh, the tutorial had no like talking, no instruction. His colors were very different. They were more muted, more earthy tones. So I used more saturated um, premix colors that I liked better. And I think that turned out pretty good. So that was my practice. I feel like I should have done more practicing, <laughs> but I didn't, but I'm gonna bring this with me um, to reference and then maybe do some practice in before I actually paint on my paper. So here's my palette. I cleaned it all up. Um, I have to refill a couple colors that I think I'm going to use a lot of. And also, if you have any issues of your uh, paint beating up and, um, yeah, I guess just like beating up on your palette so you, it's not like laid out so you can see how much paint you actually have, you can take like um, crust toothpaste or anything gritty. Um, my boyfriend has this orange soap used for mechanics to get like grease and stuff off, but it's gritty. And I used it to kind of scrape up um, the bottom of the palette a little bit. So that way the paint doesn't beat up as much. Um, so if you're watching this, Thomas, sorry for using your <laughs> expensive soap, but it'll work really well for that. I also hate cleaning my palette. I feel like I'm wasting paint and I love the look of a messy palette, but going into this, I didn't want any of the other colors mixing in um, with my painting. So I just wanted to clean it and have a fresh start. So let's fill up some colors that I'm gonna need. And here is my original swatch card I made. So I definitely used a lot of this permanent yellow light. So I wanna fill that. And I have these, um, my tubes of paint stored in these little Ikea containers on my 
Ikea pegboard, so I just have them divided by um, color families. So I'm just gonna pull them out and fill a couple up. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. I'll just have to be careful because I don't think they'll fully be dry, so just have to make sure they don't run and leak into um, the palette. So I'll have to keep it flat. Okay, so here I am all packed up and ready to go tomorrow. I have my folder of information and maps. I have my stamped watercolor paper. I have my watercolor board. I have a ruler just in case. I also brought some more practice paper just in case, my sketchbook. I have some of tape to tape my paper down on my board. This is the masking fluid pens. Um, this is my bag filled with my paint brushes. And then I also threw in some of my Windsor & Newton gouache just in case. And then I have some clips in here in case I need to clip things down. And that's all nice and packed up in this zippered pouch. I also have my water containers, which I'm nervous they're gonna be a little small but I guess we'll find out. And then some blue towels. And then I have my watercolor travel kit because it has some other stuff in here that I might use. I have a video here on my channel of everything I keep in my travel art case. So if you wanna check that out, I will link it above. And then of course I have my watercolor paints, which are my Mission Gold watercolors. And I have them in that palette. I have it flat because I just put some fresh colors in there and I don't think they're dry, so I don't wanna stick them in here and have them run. But I think this is everything. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I will also be bringing a camping chair to sit in and then probably you guys and the camera and my tripod to hopefully get some footage. So that is it for the prep video because I'm going out painting and if you wanna check out that video, definitely like and subscribe and stay tuned for that for part two to see what I end up painting. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye.